Well, hello YouTube, and welcome back to Retired for Life. So we're continuing on with a board and batten siding job here on the south-facing wall. So all the old boards are gone, the mystery corner has been fixed, and the house wrap is on. So the next step is to start putting in the pressure-treated boards along the bottom. Before I do that, I want to get an idea of just how much of an angle the yard is on so I'll get a better idea of how many boards I'm going to need. So I'm going to put in a quick chalk line here just to give me kind of a reference as to what it is I'm going to need. So this is the upper row of boards that I'm just finishing installing. And of course they're going up against the cement foundation. So I'm using my hammer drill and Tapcon screws to get them all put into place. It is another burning hot day out here. It makes it very hard to concentrate properly and make sure I'm doing what needs to be done. With the top row all fastened in place and nice and level, it does make it a little easier to do the next row. All I have to do is butt those boards up against the bottom edge of the top boards. But then of course I've got to dig because some of these boards are going to be going partly into the ground. And isn't it just the perfect weather for that? I've got a big chunk of cement there sticking out so I'm going to go get a chisel and knock that off before I try to put this board on. So it looks like I was right along a seam there, so there was a bunch of cement to chip off. And uh, now the board should go on nice and flat. Yeah, I think the cutoff from that last board will just be perfect in there. Let's go get it and check it out. Well, folks, it has been a blasting hot day today. I kind of lost track of things and didn't record as much of this as I should have because I barely had the energy for this. But anyway, we got all the boards in, so we now have... A straight line to work with. So these are the pressure treated boards uh, so they should last a good long time. So next we're going to start on the vertical boards. Not the battens yet. We'll get the boards on first and then the battens. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be a much easier process rather than crawling around on my hands and knees in the dirt here getting these in. All right we'll get cleaned up and then get back at it tomorrow morning. So here's a nice little bonus. My neighbor who I uh, help out from time to time, not the one who does the hang, but on the other side of me here, brought over these two logs. And uh, this is cherry. So we are going to eventually put these up on the mill and cut them up and he and I will uh, split the wood. I'm not sure what is the best size to 
cut something like this up in. I am not a furniture maker. I've had almost zero experience with hardwood. So I'm thinking for me, I'm gonna keep the slabs and use them for barbecuing, cut them up into firewood. Um, but the lumber part of it, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe if I get a, a four by four out of it, that's something that I can cut down at some point in time later. Um, something I can use on the uh, lathe. So I'm thinking maybe a four by four and a couple of boards, one inch thick boards and leave the edges on so it can be used for live edge. And we'll see where we go from there. What do you folks think? I know there's people out there with a lot more experience than I've got with dealing with hardwood. What kind of sizes would you cut these two into? All right, let's get back to what we're supposed to be doing. So I've already got the battens that I'm gonna be using for window framing all stained in light gray and put away for the time being. So now I've started uh, on the staining of the other battens that are going to go onto the boards. So this is the first half of them. I'll get a number of coats on these and then get the other ones up here and get them stained. That way the battens will be basically ready to just go up and on and they'll be done. So I feel like I should be holding some kind of party here. This is the first of the vertical boards going on. Now they're not stained. The only vertical boards that I am gonna stain are the ones that are framing around the window. It's really a very easy process to use the roller and stain these boards once they're up in place. Because I don't have the use of furring strips that you would normally be fastening your boards to, I'm using my stud finder to find the blocking that goes between the studs in the wall. This works pretty good. So my boards are 8 inches wide and I'm using a 1 inch space between each board. So what I'm doing here is measuring over to the window nine inches at a time so I can find out just where that board that's going to go up against the window frame lines up. That way I can make adjustments ahead of time if I need to. So with the boards in place now over as far as the window, all I have to do is fasten the bottom of these boards to the foundation with the Tapcon screws. Well, we made pretty good progress today. We've got the first bunch of boards on. I've got all the boards for underneath this big window cut. So we'll uh, get those on next. This fitted board goes around the window is uh, just temporarily on there. I'm gonna take it off and stain it uh, first before having to worry about putting the frame around it. So that's good, but we've got quite a bit of rain coming but that's okay, I desperately need to get back into the shop and clean up the mess that's been building up in there. All right, we'll see you in the morning.
I hope you guys have been enjoying today's video. And if you have, I'd really appreciate the like. And I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, if you've got any thoughts, suggestions, anything like that, I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get back to the job. Well, I've been working like crazy out on that wall to uh, get that moving along as quickly as I can. But one thing I did let happen in the meantime was this shop has just turned into such a mess. All I've been doing is pulling stuff out of drawers, heading out there, doing the job, coming back in and dropping things here. So. It's a bit damp out there right now, kind of raining lightly off and on. So I'm gonna take that as a signal to myself to stop and clean up. So I'm gonna take a few minutes, probably more like an hour and a half, and get the shop tidied up so we're organized again, and then we can continue on with that job. All right, folks, there we are. I can at least see the floor now. It's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than what it was. So I've got a few more odd jobs to take care of, and this is one of them. As you may recall from a past video, my trimmer failed, and I believe our part is in. So let's have a look at it. So what had happened is the uh, trimmer blade stopped spinning, and I found out when I took it apart that the, the uh, spring or cable that runs from the drive of the motor down to driving the head here had broken off at the end. Not a big deal, fortunately. So I've got a new one ordered and hopefully it's the right one. Sure looks like it. Let's get ready to put this back in place. Okay, so I stuck the head back on just to get it out of the way and so I don't lose anything. So we'll take this back off now. So before we do anything serious here, as in permanently install it, I'm just gonna test fit it, but this can get a bit greasy. All right, let's see what happens here. So I should end up with a bit sticking out the end here, and I have that. And that just gets made it up with this. Yeah, that's gonna work just fine. So I wanna make sure that this is properly lubricated. You don't want to just put it in dry. So I'm just going to, not a huge amount, but I'm going to wipe this with grease. Because it is spinning inside there. And it's a good idea to, every once in a while, take this out and re-grease it, depending on how much you use it. And there we go. Now, since I've got it apart, I'm gonna take this nut out here, or this bolt, I should say, out here. And I'm gonna dab a little bit of grease down in there. And that's it. Really easy fix. So, if you've got a trimmer that the uh, head stops spinning, don't be too quick to throw it away. It could be a very simple fix as uh, that cable in there. Let's start it up just to be sure. All right, here we go.
back in business. Well, it's not as hot today, but boy, it is humid. It's not raining, but it is right on the edge. So close. Anyway, we got this fixed. We got the shop tidied up. We're ready to get back to work on the siding, but I think we're going to call that it for today's video. On the next video, hopefully we'll be right back to work out there. So don't forget, if you've got any suggestions, comments, anything like that, I'd love to hear from you. I always try to reply to everybody that leaves a comment. And I appreciate that and I appreciate the advice that I get. That really helps. So if you've been enjoying the videos, I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. That would really help. We are slowly growing, slowly making progress. And I'm very grateful for that. And I want to thank all my new subscribers and all the regular. That really makes a difference and I really appreciate that. So remember, stay safe out there, be good to each other, and we will see you out on the trails the next time. I'll get this back up to the power shed.